Hey, Mike here. Uh, working here in the shop, uh, building another little refrigeration unit. This one's a little cleaner than the last one. Um, I'm probably going to take that last video down because there were so many mistakes I made in that. So, uh, what we got here is a little self contained uh, refrigeration unit. It's a chiller right now as its uh, current, current embodiment. Um, refrigerant here is propane. We are working with a small, about quarter horsepower. Uh, AC compressor. Uh, I do have a small DC compressor that I'm going to do some work with later on down the road, but uh, this is good for abuse. So, uh, as I said, the uh, refrigerant's propane, just barbecue grade propane right out of the bottle. Um, it's not the cleanest, it's got some water content in it. Uh, my brazing um, is fine, but uh, I didn't purge anything, so there's a lot of, a lot of uh, dirt and whatnot inside. So, let's see, we're air cooled there. There's a little um, 12 volt DC uh, computer fan on the back. Um, so power supply, that's just for the fan. It's a little overkill for the fan, but uh, that has capacity to run the DC compressor, so I'm just using that. Um, I have about six feet of uh, 31 thousandths, 0.031 uh, capillary tubing, inside diameter. Uh, run through this old strainer here, and then uh, heat exchanger runs down the suction line down to the evaporator. Now. The reason I built this thing was to chill the coolant. Um, so where we're at right now, 3.7 degrees the coolant. So uh, uh, getting down there, I started at about, uh, I don't know, probably about 70 degrees liquid temperature about, uh, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes to an hour ago. So uh, I'll try to set the camera up here so I can show you the evaporator. Uh, I forgot to put a handle on this thing, so it's kind of awkward to pick it up. but. Uh, everything can be, you know, these uh, hoses from the gauges can be disconnected, and then all you have is the um, uh, power cord. This thing could be dropped into any tank. So you can just see it's a simple wrap of uh, quarter inch copper tubing. There's a sort of a lumpy thing there, it's a little accumulator, just made out of half inch pipe. So, um, what I'm going to do with this, it seems to be working just fine as it is <clears throat> um, for the temperatures that I'm, I'm shooting for, just in the single digits Fahrenheit. Um, I'm using this bucket right now, this insulated bucket, because uh, <clears throat> I'm going to do the uh, thermosiphon here soon. Uh, I had a video a few weeks ago where I uh, built a simple two-phase thermosiphon, and uh, this time I'm going to utilize some glass tubing to show the, the bubble pumping action and see how far, uh, how much distance I can put between the condenser and the evaporator. Uh, the only issue I'm going to run into here is because the evaporator in this thing hangs down a little further now. Originally it was a little higher in the bucket, so I have room for the condenser of the thermosiphon in the bottom. Um, now I, I added a uh, uh, thermocouple to take uh, temperatures in the uh, suction line, and so now the whole thing's kind of hanging down a little further. So what I might end up doing is um, just using a layer or two of uh, uh, pink foam polyisocyanurate uh, insulation. Uh, between the board and the uh, uh, between the uh, board and the bucket to raise the evaporator height up, so that I can install my condenser through this uh, through that hole down there, and probably just hot glue up the uh, the lines, and uh, then I can chill the bucket and then try to uh, do some cooling action passively. So uh, see our suction temperature there at about negative 19. Uh, let's see, we got about 10 psi on the low side corresponds to negative 21. Um, I'm not too worried about the small amount of superheat because uh, that temperature is taken let's see, um, down below, um, down, down where it's frosting and the, uh, the heat exchanger is taking care of any kind of uh, uh, slugging that might occur. So that, that works pretty effectively. Uh, supposedly it adds some capacity to the, uh, to the refrigeration system. Um, not going to do anything for performance. I mean, efficiency, you know. um, but uh, yeah, it's effective. So um, I left myself plenty of extra, about three feet here, uh, if and when I decide that I want to cut any off. Uh, I went for about six feet total. Um, R290 capillary tube tables aren't too common. Uh, it's probably something out there. I did read uh, an article by Tecumseh that suggested um, look at any 404A refrigerant uh, capillary tube table, and that should get you uh, in the ballpark. So it's suggested for a low temperature at this capacity of compressor to 
go for about four and a half feet of 031. Um, I went with six, so I'd have room to cut some off. Um, I'm getting about, usually about 10 degrees of subcooling on the, uh, the condenser side. Um, I'm pretty pleased with the whole setup. Um, I think if anything, I'll probably end up taking a little bit of cap tube out later on, but right now, um, it's got about an ounce and a half of propane in it. seems to work pretty effectively. I did bleed a little bit off. I was starting to get some frosting coming back this line. Um, and that's probably, you know, that's, I, I'm, I'm, since I'm shooting for these low temperatures here, I'm about four degrees, um, I want the charge to, to function well at that temperature. Now, at higher temperatures, when it has a, a higher load, um, I'm going to get a lot more superheat. Um, probably going to get a lot higher discharge pressures, a lot more heat moving, you know. Um, but uh, just to maintain it, I'm probably pulling about an amp and a half, maybe 1.6 amps, which is uh, pretty reasonable for this size of compressor. I, as I understand it, this compressor is designed specifically for low back pressure. Um, it came out of an ice maker after all. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to share that a little bit. Uh, down the road, I'm going to um, probably um, cut a hole in the top of a small refrigerator and mount this thing in there and uh, maybe adjust the capillary tubing for um, air cooling, although that's not my uh, uh, long-term goal for this thing. I'd, I eventually want to build a, uh, just use a stainless steel uh, bucket or a pan of some sort and uh, chill a coolant in that pan. I um, haven't specifically decided on a coolant yet. This is just ethylene glycol uh, because that's what I had on hand. Um, toxic stuff, so you know I don't want to use that stuff in, in, uh, for long term. Um, might even look at alcohol. I don't know. Uh, stuff's kind of messy here. So um, eventually I'd like to, to, to build a small freezer um, in a, a modular setup like this. Um, <clears throat> I just think it would be kind of neat to be able to uh, cut a hole and plop this thing right in. So uh, you're going to be seeing a lot more of that stuff here uh, down the road. So. Anyway, that's my modular cooling unit. Thanks for watching. Huh?